。呢、这个字咧系当初梁 Sir 咧接触拜屋嘅时候咧，觉得拜屋好 interesting 嘅原因嚟嘅。二零一九年第五条题目系有关于肺病嘅，咁 L 呢幅图咧就显示咗啦一个人嘅部分肺部啦，佢嘅气囊嘅呼吸表面咧系沉积咗一层硬化咗嘅尘埃嘅，咁呢个就系尘埃嘅沉积啦。而 M 呢幅图咧就系显示咗呢个患者嘅肺组织，你都见到个气囊啦，同埋呢个尘埃沉积咧就系个气囊嘅表面嘅。而喺入个病之前咧 ，Part 你就问啦。要我哋比较下血管 A 同埋血管 B， 佢哋血液当中嘅氧同埋葡萄糖嘅含量，同埋解释我哋嘅答案嘅。Part A 咧要考我哋嘅就系要分辨翻血管 A 同埋 B 啦。而血管 A 同埋 B 点样分呢？就系、是、利用翻我哋血流方向。咁我哋之前咧都有片拍过噶啦。阿奇动物咧 A for a w a y 所以啦，动物咧就系将血液带离开心脏，即系去个肺啦。然後 wing 咧就係將啲血帶去心臟，即係離開個肺啦。咁所以啦，血管 A 咧就係肺靜脈，就係、是、離開個肺翻翻去心臟。而血管 B 咧就係肺動脈啦，就係、是、離開心臟去個肺嘅。咁而家知道咗之後咧，我哋就去翻生物思路又睇一睇咯。之前都有段片咧就拍過俾大家睇噶啦。根據翻血管嘅命名。就会知道翻血管嘅功能啦。呢两条血管同个肺嘅关系就系肺动脉将血液带去个肺，而肺静脉就系将啲血带离开个肺，就翻翻去心脏嘅。所以佢哋两者去承载住咩血呢？你系应该知道嘅。肺动脉就系运载住缺氧血离开心脏去到个肺，而肺静脉就系承载住含氧血由个肺翻翻心脏。咁、那个肺做啲乜嘢呢？就係、是、做气体交换啦。所以答案呢都好直接㗎啦，就係、是、肺静脉入面嘅血呢，佢係承载住多一啲嘅氧气嘅，相比起肺动脉承载住嘅血，因为一个係含氧血，一个係缺氧血啦嘛。或者将呢句反返转嚟讲囉，就係、是、肺动脉所承载住嘅血呢，相比起肺静脉所承载住嘅血呢，就少啲氧气，同样意思嚟嘅啫。但要解释啊嘛，就要解释返个肺做咗啲乜嘢啦。个肺进行嘅就係气体交换，而今次题目讲嘅係氧气啊嘛，所以我哋集中返讲氧气就可以啦。因为个气囊呢，就係透过扩散去获得个氧气，而所以离开气囊嘅血呢，就会含有较多嘅氧气啦。而肺呢，除咗做气体交换之外啦，肺入面嘅細胞佢都係活生生㗎嘛，所以啦佢哋都会进行呼吸作用嘅。喺呼吸作用当中就会用氧气同埋用咗葡萄。糖同一时间亦都会产生咗二氧化碳。题目今次问嘅系葡萄糖啊嘛，所以我哋集中翻葡萄糖就已经足够啦。所以当啲血由个肺经过肺静脉翻翻心脏嘅话咧，喺入面嘅血啦就会相对上少一啲嘅葡萄糖啦。咁啊，因为啦喺个气囊啦、肺组织嘅細胞啦，佢哋都系活生生嘅，佢哋系会从血液当中摄取葡萄糖进行呼吸作用，所以离开气囊嘅血液咧系会含有较少嘅葡萄糖嘅。咁今次呢度题目啦，问嘅就係氧气同埋葡萄糖啫。下次未问下你二氧化碳咯 ，A 同 B 两者点样比较啊？点解佢有个咁样嘅差别啊？我相信大家呢一定答得到嘅。留低你嘅答案喺留言区，睇下自己啱唔啱。跟住去到拍 B， 参考返上述呢个肺病嘅资料，即係有尘埃嘅沉积啦，去提出返呢、這个疾病係点样去窒碍咗呢个病人进行气体交换嘅两个可能性。一开始我就俾返呢幅图大家先，就係、是、俾大家知道气囊嘅适应性特征。因为你讲唔出佢哋嘅适应性特征，你又点样可以噏得出究竟个气囊而家係点样受到负面嘅影响，去窒碍咗气体交换呢？所以呢条题目呢，就运用返 d i s e a s e approach 体病学拜 i 同埋直线抽击答题法啦。你要话俾我听嘅。唔係讲緊话我个气囊呢本身有呢啲嘅适应性特征嘅，而家有呢个病啦，所以佢就做唔到呢个特征囉，做唔到呢个功能囉，令到气体交换做唔到囉。唔係啊，你要话俾我听，到底个气囊发生过什么事？然后再话俾我听，点解佢会为气体交换带嚟负面嘅影响？就唔系纯粹话佢本身就做到嘅，而家就做唔到咯。
，咁乜嘢叫做唔到啊？如果你嘅答法唔系直线抽击，而系兜个圈去答嘅话咧，你就将会讲咗个气囊嘅一啲适应性嘅特征啦。例如啦，我哋有好多嘅气囊啦，啲气囊嗰个薄壁咧系一个细胞咁薄啦，而而家呢个人咧就患上呢个肺病、哦。就会令到佢嘅气体交换嘅速度下降啦。嗱，你以为自己搭紧噶，系因为今次题目佢讲噶嘛？呢、这个病系会负面影响咗个气体交换，咁我咪搭紧咯。嗱，个气体交换嘅速度就会下降咗嘛。其实你唔系搭紧题目噶，因为就算你咁样搭，你两个方法，你两个方法都系讲气体交换嘅速度慢咗，咁咪即系同一个答案咯，系咪？咁所以你应该点样答呢？第一就系針對翻气囊一个薄壁嘅特征咧，尘埃嘅沉积咧就会形成咗一个屏障，去覆盖咗气囊嘅内表面，去增加咗扩散嘅距离，所以就令到氧气扩散入去血液嘅呢一个途径咧就会长咗啦。第二啦，气囊嘅内表面俾尘埃覆盖咗，从而啦可以进行扩散嘅表面面积亦都因而减少啦。所以如果你用曲线去答题，兜圈圈去答咧。本身个肺入面咧就有好多气囊嘅，咁咁多气囊嘅话啦，就提供咗一个好大嘅气体交换嘅表面面积啦，扩散嘅表面面积啦。咁而家啦就系、是、少咗咯，咁点解会少咗先得噶？你要话俾我听，到底气囊发生过什么事啊嘛？题目有讲噶嘛，有尘埃嘅沉积啊嘛，系咪？去到第三啦，硬化嘅尘埃沉积物咧，就会减低肺嘅弹性。所以即使当个肺扩张嘅时候咧，个肺嘅容量都系较细嘅。咁你幻想下啦，你好似喺个气球当中咧，去贴咗好多胶纸啊。咁其实佢个弹性咧系少咗，佢系硬咗嘅。即使我哋个胸腔系大咗嘅话咧，我哋个肺咧都拉唔得大啦。跟住啦，又嚟到一点出发啦。今次嘅题目咧就考气囊嘅，跟住考两样嘢。第一就系气体交换，第二咧就系血液循环啦。先讲咗血液循环先啦。今次去问我哋嘅咧就系血液成分啦、氧气啦、葡萄糖啦。下次可能问埋二氧化碳啦，又或者啦，新言落去就问翻双循环咯。肺循环、体循环究竟当中啦，唔同嘅血管佢哋嘅血压有咩唔同啦？血液入面嘅氧气浓度又有啲咩唔同啦，同埋原因啦，你解唔解释得到呢？点样去运用翻血管嘅定义，去帮助自己释放翻一啲记忆体，去谂嘢，而令到你系不需要死记呢个双循环呢？然后咧就去到气体交换啦，就讲下气囊啦，有咩适应性特征，令到佢可以进行到呢个气体交换嘅功能啦。而呢个题目再推深一步嘅就系尘埃沉积所导致嘅体病学 b i o d i s e a s e approach。今次要考我哋嘅咧就系肺尘病或者讲嘅直肺病。佢啲咩嘅病征呢？有啲咩嘅症状呢？啊，佢一款非传染性嘅疾病嚟㗎喎。佢有啲咩嘅高危因素呢？又點樣可以预防到呢？咁呢幅图呢，就係讲緊呢当初香港起高铁嘅时候啊，嗰啲建筑工人呢，钻探啊，做工程嘅时候呢，佢哋嘅口罩啊，戴咗十到二十分钟就已经黑到咁样样啦。咁你幻想下，如果佢哋冇戴口罩进入个工地入面啊，哇，劲多尘埃啊嘅时候啦，佢哋个肺可以有几污糟？呢、这个就係肺尘病嘅概念。咁我会喺留言区俾一啲参考资料大家，你会揾到一啲简单嘅资料，好短嘅就真係要睇下有啲咩嘅因素係令到一个人呢大啲机会患有肺尘病啦，有啲咩嘅迹象啦，除咗咳之外，又或者啦点样 prevent 啦。当中咧有个字眼咧，我想同大家介绍下嘅。呢、这个字咧系当初梁 Sir 咧接触摆屙嘅时候咧，觉得摆屙好 interesting 嘅原因嚟嘅。啊，就系、是、一个咁样嘅病嚟噶。呢、这个病咧其实就关个肺事嘅。呢、这个病咧中文叫做超微粒直尘埃沉着症，或者叫火山直肺病。佢英文咧叫做 Lumino Ultra Microscopic Silico Volcano Coniosis。其实直肺病咧系有好多款嘅变奏嘅，呢一款嘅直肺病咧就系讲紧系住得较为近火山啊，或者受到火山爆发所波及嘅人咧个肺部有机会面对嘅情况。咁当然啦，仲有其他啦。你喺金属加工厂入面工作嘅话咧，你入面积聚嘅咧就所谓嘅尘埃咧就唔系直嚟噶咯，可能系啲铝嚟嘅 ，aluminium 嚟嘅。咁我想讲嘅就係、是，其实虽然呢个字好似好长啊，其实只只字可以斩得开嘅。Lumino 系个肺 ，Ultra 超啊嘛，系嘛 ，Ultra 名啊嘛，超人啊嘛，系咪 ？Microscopic 好细粒啊嘛 ，Silico 即系 Silicon 啦 
v o l c a n o o、okay, k 即系火山啦、啊。c o n i o s i s 系一个尘埃沉着症嘅意思。Night question five is about the lung disease. Diagram L it shows part of the lungs in the patient suffering from a certain lung disease. A hardened layer of the duct deposit was found on the respiratory surface of the air sac. Photomicrograph M shows the lung tissue taken out from the patient, so we can see the air sac and then the duct deposit on the surface of the air sac. So before we talk about the lung disease, Part A asks us to compare the oxygen and the glucose content of the blood in vessel A and B, and explain your answer. This question it shares a concept that can we identify blood vessel based on the blood flow direction. So in previous video we talk about that artery A for airway. It means that they will carry the blood away from the heart, and for the vein it will carry the blood towards the heart. Therefore, for the blood vessel A, it is the pulmonary vein carrying the blood from the lungs towards the heart, and blood vessel B, it is the pulmonary artery carrying the blood from the heart towards the lungs. And then let's talk about the thinking logic for the scaffolding mindset. So in previous video, I talk about that by using the terminology or the definition of the blood vessel, construct the function of the blood vessels.、Uh, what is the blood pressure inside, and what are the blood vessels transporting, and compare the artery and the vein. In this case, we have the pulmonary artery carry the blood from the heart to the lungs, and then we have the pulmonary vein to carry the blood from the lungs go back to the heart. Therefore, we know that. Pulmonary artery carry deoxygenated blood away from the heart to the lungs. Pulmonary vein carry oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. How about the lungs? What is the function of the lungs? Is for gas exchange, uptake oxygen and remove the carbon dioxide. And in this question, we just focus on oxygen. Answer is very straightforward. Blood vessel A, pulmonary vein, contains more oxygen than the vessel B, which is the pulmonary artery. And the reason is that gas exchange takes place at air sac, and oxygen is taken up by the blood through diffusion. So blood leaving the air sac should have more oxygen. And apart from the oxygen, we also need to study the glucose content of the blood. So for the lungs, because it is a living organ, it contains the living cells. So that's why the living cells they will undergo the cellular respiration. It will consume the oxygen and glucose and produce carbon dioxide. And for this part, we focus on the glucose content. It's okay. And then we know that after the lungs, the cells they use the glucose. Therefore, the pulmonary vein, the blood vessel A. It will contain less glucose than the pulmonary artery. The reason behind that because the cell in the air sac or the lung tissues have taken up glucose from the blood for respiration. So blood leaving the air sac should have less glucose. And then the possible question variation is that it can ask you to compare the carbon dioxide content of the blood in vessels A and B and explain your answer. And leave your answer in the comment section. Let's see if you get it correct. And for part B, we talk about the lung disease. With reference to the above information about the lung disease, suggest two possible ways in which the disease adversely affects the gas exchange in the patient. So in this question, you really need to recall the adaptive features of the air sac. So you can see this diagram and this table to tell you that how can the air sac adapt to its function. To perform the function well, now the function is gas exchange, and you need to be aware that this question it is a disease approach, and it asks that what is the negative effect of the disease. Therefore, you need to use the straight to the point answering skills to tell me what happened to the air sac. What's wrong? Don't just tell me that. Oh, at the very beginning, the air sac they have this list of the adaptive features, and now this patient is suffering from the disease. Therefore, the patient cannot do this thing, do that thing. Need to straight to the point to tell me that what happened to the air sac according to the information about the lung disease, and then tell me what is the negative effect. On the gas exchange. So one thing I would like to remind you is that if you do not answer the question straight to the point, and then you just go around the answer, what what are you going to answer? You will say that oh, there are a lot of adaptive features of the air sac for the gas exchange. For example, large in number or the thin wall one cell thick epithelium of the air sac. 
and now this person is suffering from this lung disease and then it will reduce the rate of gas exchange and then you think that you are really answering the question however you are not you are just talking about the adaptive features and then just repeat the question the question told you already the disease will adversely affect the gas exchange and then you just tell me that it will reduce the rate of gas exchange but you need to talk about two possible ways but apart from reducing the rate of gas exchange no you don't have second one but you think that you are really answering the question but how should we answer the question straight to the point first of all the ducts deposit form a barrier which will increase the diffusion distance and then the inner surface of the air sac was covered by the ducts Therefore, the area available for diffusion was reduced. Last but not least, the hardened layer of the duct deposit reduced the elasticity of the lungs. Hence, there is a smaller lung volume when the lungs inflate. And then we talk about the curriculum mapping. This question it starts from the air set and it asks you about gas exchange and the blood circulation. Let's talk about the blood circulation first. It asks about the blood content, oxygen, glucose, and carbon dioxide. And maybe next time it can ask you the double circulation, pulmonary circulation, and the systemic circulation. You can watch the video before to refresh your idea that how can we use the definition terminology of the archery and thing to construct the whole idea without rote learning without memorize all the thing you can free your brain to think about it and once you think about it there will be a long-term memory rather than just short term uh, pulmonary artery it contains the high blood pressure and then it contains the deoxygenated blah 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 five minutes later you will forget but think once you construct this diagram once by yourself there will be a long-term memory and then we talk about the gas exchange so we can relate the adaptive features of the air set to its function remember the ff study method feature and function and for this question we use the disease approach check that are you familiar with the adaptive feature of the air set we use the dust deposit and for this disease, we call it pneumocoliosis. So for this non-infectious disease, any signs, any symptoms apart from coughing, and any risk factor, and how can we prevent it? This gentleman, he is the construction worker for the high-speed railway in Hong Kong construction. So the difference is just shows that when the construction worker, they get into the construction site for 10 to 20 minutes, the marks will become dark like this. So you can imagine that how dusty in the construction site. And what if they do not wear the mask will happen to their lungs? And you can see the reference link in the comment section. I attach you some very brief introduction in, uh, information about the pneumonocoliosis. And before we come to the end of this video, I would like to introduce these terms to you guys. Uh, these terms, it makes me uh, feel extremely interested in biology because I know that the terms are not that difficult it seems like very long and complicated but somehow if we know how to separate the words the whole idea will be easier for this term is talking about pneumono ultra microscopic silico volcano coliosis pneumono is about the lungs ultra super microscopic small super small silico silicon volcano volcano itself and coliosis it means the ducts deposit in the lungs so this disease is talking about the ducts deposit and where are the ducts come from they come from the volcano and what is the composition of the ducts it contains the silicon so that's why the silicon from the volcano and the deposit in your lungs and they are ultra microscopic so this disease it refers some people that live very close to the volcano or uh, they are affected by the volcano eruption and then they may breathe in the dust in their lungs in fact there are different types of pneumonocoliosis for example some uh, workers they work in the uh, metal industry so they will breathe in the dust containing the metal for example aluminium the aluminium they will deposit in their lungs so uh, that's one word i would like to share with you guys to be a funny thing in biology